a story that cuts like a knife. So me up, keeping all of it inside. I know how to do it, but I can't find the time. So hold me down, keeping all of it inside. Hold me down, keeping all of it inside. Back out. Oh, could use a lift. So this is day three. I've had two nights in Blumen hotels because uh, yesterday I came here. The weather was horrific. If you've been followers on Instagram, <laughs> I couldn't stand up yesterday in the car park. I couldn't see. Even the skiers were turning around. Just saying it was too mad. So I didn't camp yesterday. This is the old railway line, an old funicular railway, which was running the day. It's a lot easier. I've got to go up there, right up there, and then up there. If I make it, it's not easy walking in the snow. It's icy, and you've got to. You've just got to concentrate, like otherwise you slip. Even with the spikes on, I'm slipping. Should have maybe put me big crampons on. Anyway, I'm all kitted out. Got my goggles, hat, loads of gloves, all sorts. So we'll push on. We'll see how far we we'll get. It's hard. It's cold as well. Wind's picking up, I'm just out of it at the minute. Look at this, it's proper snow. All the skiers coming down. Took a motorway, a ski run motorway. Oh, see the wind. Brutal. It's hard walking on this. It's easier walking on the ice than it is on the snow. See if I get a better grip on the ice, you're just sinking into the snow. Anyway, so we're gonna continue up there. And then, I'm not actually sure. I'm following the map. I am on the path, so that's all right. I'm plotting it as I go, so that I'm taking the right way. So, I, I think I end up up there. And then round it, and I think that's, that's where I need to be, the top of there. We'll find out. We'll just press on. We'll keep going. Oh, I'm absolutely creased. Hard going up here. The thing is with this, sink into it. It's hard. He's on skis. He's just run past us if I'm gone still. I need skis. Somebody bring skis. Get the views. So the wind's picking up and I've had to get extreme measures in. I've to go on drastic. Just keep the wind out of your eyes. The eyes were watering like mad. Ugh. Been walking for an hour. I'm still well I'm more than halfway. But it's just dead it's steep. All the way as steep as can be. Loads of skiers coming down. It's a busy old mountain, like. i go that way. Up to the Ptarmigan station. And then 
I think somewhere up there is the top, over the back there. Ah, oh, we'll find out. Could even be over there, I don't know. I'll find out when I get to the Tarmigan station because it's like a marked path. Whoo! I'm right in amongst it here. Overhanging cornices. It's the path I came up. I mean, it's not far from the car park. It's just so steep. And then I'm going up here. That way to the time again station. And then up to the summit. Probably not be too much longer. Apparently there's a big snow shower coming. That'll be good. So this is the Tarmigan station. I've been here years ago, I came up on the train. About six, seven years ago maybe. And they wouldn't let you out. You had to pay extra if you wanted to come out, which I wasn't going to pay. Because I wasn't like that. That's Loch Morlick down there. I nearly ended up there tonight. But I pushed on. I've done 2.7 miles, which is about 3 miles. Now oh, I've just got to get up there. Now that line of people is up there is the top of the Cairngorm. 4,000 odd feet. And the weather looks like it's coming in. But I'm well prepared. Goodies. Get yourself a pair of ski goggles. Goggles. <laughs> I can't speak. I've got, I've got altitude sickness. I'm yeah, just hoping I can find a pitch and then get the pegs in because I think the snow is quite deep. So I might struggle to get the pegs in. In which case, I'll have an issue because it's going to get windy and I need them pegs in. So I might be digging. I don't know if it's open or not. I don't think anybody comes up. Obviously, if you want to come up, you've got to walk up. Everything's off. The ski tour's not working, the train's not working. I don't know what they're going to do. I can't just leave it. Anyway, I've got to go up there now. Up that way. Right, last bit. The weather has closed in now. It's a bit wild. That's the way up. So I'm headed to the abyss. Got all these cairns on the right. Telling me that there's a pathway up here. I can see kind of a summit, tree point or something. Summit up there. There's a couple of people there now. Girl came down two minutes ago in a pair of running trainers. Honestly, man, what are people like? Right, nearly there. Well. Weather station. Ooh. It's coming, keeps coming up, taking readings, wind speed, temperature. I can tell you that for now, it's flipping freezing. Oh, I'm gonna get in. Pegs are not in great, like. I'm gonna have to get get my hands un numb and then go and sort the pegs out. Look at that! That's the, the summit's over there. I came that way. <laughs> what a place! What do you do when you stuck in a tent? Can't go down now. It's three miles to go down, and it's really bad terrain as well. And it's getting dark, and the weather's terrible. There's no visibility, so I'll just have to wait in the morning. Sit it out. <laughs> it's wild though. It is wild. I'll give it that. I mean, I'm warm enough now. I've warmed up and thawed out. Put my gloves on, like. 
but I got in the bag, I just zipped it in and just stayed in there till I warmed up and I'm alright now. Feet are back, my feet are back, fingertips are back. I'm back. Whew, so I've only got two beers and I don't think I'm gonna touch them to be fair. It's not in the mood. Not in the mood for drinking. So we're gonna have to just sit this one out, I'm afraid. I've got that for me meal, but whether I have that or not, I don't know. I had a massive breakfast. Stuffed with a breakfast like. And that walk up here was hard, man. It's three and a half miles. It was, um, the snowplow was uh, making a, a ski track for everybody, and, but it was dead deep and I was just sinking into it. Everybody's going past on skis. I was just sinking into the snow. So I was struggling getting up. It was hard work. It's like walking in sand. Oh, this is... <laughs> I mean, I've got the pegs in down deep in the snow, but whether they're staying or not is another thing. I'm concerned with this this panel here, it's getting just absolutely rattled. Winds change in direction all the time. It's hard to work out where it's coming from. No, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I've been outside. The main issue I've got is this pole here is getting pushed in and I, I couldn't get that guy line out that way to like pull it out where you would normally have it so it's going the wrong way the guy line so oh, I don't know I don't know if it's gonna survive it should do it just might bend in a bit you know but that's it that's the weakest the weakened point there is that because that um because I couldn't get the guy line I just could not get it into the ground over there it was absolutely solid it's either rock or like just hard ice tried always to get the pegs in which wouldn't go in like all the others are in but that was a major stumbling block I couldn't get it in so who knows oh it's exciting anyway oh I might get um I was gonna get the kettle on I haven't brought any tea or coffee up with us what what an idiot <laughs> I've got two cold cans of beer and some water I might just warm the water up a bit of hot water <laughs> what did you have? What do you have for your tea? So some hot water. Oh god, it's freezing though. It's really cold. It's only um it's only saying it's one degree, minus one. No, minus one point three in here. God knows how that wind chill is about minus eleven, minus twelve. Just don't want to go out and find out. But yeah, this we'll have to keep an eye on this pole. If it's like the Stiker the stake I was bending in but it wasn't breaking it was just springing back so I might do that 10 mil pole it shouldn't break like if it does then I'm gonna be in a world of trouble because this is not this is not an easy walk back down oh, we'll see what happens oh, well I'm in I've zipped up the doors so I full four season now because uh, um, Snow's getting in the porch. Whew, that's nice and cosy now. They've been cosy. You wouldn't think there was a, a major storm going on out there. Until you look outside and you see. Oh, everybody have a good New Year, Christmas, New Year. This will go out after New Year, like because I'm still away in Scotland until New Year's Eve. New Year's Day, I come back. So these will all come out in 23 all this video but I had a good night good night in Fort William first night second night I was in Abbey Moor uh, and this is the third night <laughs> I wish I was back in Abbey Moor <coughs> visited a few local pubs quite nice food and all that sort of thing right I'm gonna um, limit me filming because the battery is on 50% now I'm keeping it warm in me uh, inside pocket it's staying warm in there so it's not knocking off but I'm just holding it I'm just holding it in my hand because I need to keep putting it in my pocket right see cozy man and then ah even cozier apart from that gripping red light chain and uh, white light chain in my face here we go then eight o'clock oh I've killed a bit of time just mucking about something to eat chicken tikka fill it up Look, I've got one beer, I haven't even opened it yet. I've got two cans, I haven't even opened that. 
I don't know if I'm in the mood. My last video I said, what well, you've got to disconnect the gas because it leaches carbon monoxide. I meant it leached gas and it can make you poorly. It leaches carbon monoxide when you're burning the gas. That's what I meant to say. Just got a bit confused. But it's still a good idea to detach them. Because if you if you if that just any leaks come out of that, it could be a bad headache, you know, and make you feel sick. And I always take them apart anyway. If some of them have got little caps on as well, put the cap on. That will stop it from leaking out at all. The wind seems to have died down, thankfully. Snow's got in. I don't know if it's ice or snow blown under. But it has been pretty wild the last couple of hours. It's forecast to come back wild as well, so I'm gonna just get this while I can and then cinch down and ride it out. And we'll get up in the morning and hopefully get down. Be alright. Don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Camping or what. See how I feel. Probably had enough of camping by the time I get back. <laughs> Picked up again. Shut the doors again. Oh yeah. Well, I wanted adventure. I always said I wanted to come at the top of here. After watching Eddie's video, Wild Scott's Wild Campers video, when I came up here, I thought, yeah, I'll have some of that. They had a calm night though, wasn't like this. I'm just, I'm just about to get into bed, like, try and get some sleep. Probably be up and down all night. Just want to say that if you're, if you're a novice wild camper, or beginner, please don't do this. <laughs> it's took me years to get up to doing this, like, it's not for the faint heart of this. You're 4,100 feet here, very exposed. Anything could happen. The weather can change in an instant up here. It doesn't matter what the forecast says, the weather does what it wants up here. So just bear that in mind. And we'll see you. Oh, can't see a thing like that. We'll see you on the morrow. That's somebody else's catcher, isn't it? Well, it's the next day. That was a fun night. Never stopped. Never stopped all night. It's solid. God, now I'm gonna get this tent away. Look at this. Foot of snow in the porch. I can't wait to look outside. <laughs> the trouble's gonna be getting the guy lanes out and the pegs. I think they're buried. But it's done well, the tent like it's never moved. It's put up with some wild wind last night. I've like, got the right up. It's easy 40, 50 mile an hour, just gusts were violent. So I kept all the vitals inside. The sleep mat went down. This is broke. Great. It's all I mean. So I'm gonna get me uh, act together and be brave and get out. <sighs> Come back out when we get outside, have a look what it's like.
tent came apart all right actually holes they were a little bit frozen but i got them apart pegs i just dug them out oh this is deep there's been a lot of snow since this is the way i came up yesterday it's just been covered they bring a snow plow down and it just cuts channel for the skiers and hopefully it doesn't do that when i'm on it all right so we've just got to go down there down to the car park and then on to my final destination i don't know where i'm going actually just met it as i go along oh. hard that like really hard good though experience i was warm enough apart from the fact my mat went down but I, you know i had the silver foil mat sort that out but uh, it's exhausting walking in snow all right so i'm back down i'm back down to the car park i was up there that one is the cane gone good walk like that's three miles to from here it's three miles to walk up there it's not really hard there's a couple of steep bits but it was only made hard by the snow and the fact that it was sinking in it so i'm back the car's just down there so onto the next one whatever that may be i haven't made any plans i'm just making it as i go along might not be another camp because everything's drenched my mat's broken but i'll back i'll be back with a vengeance 